don't put your trust in horsemen, especially when you don't even know who they are. That's a lesson learned from LARPers, by the way. But right here, uh, encyclical of Pope Pius X. And I wanted to just talk about this. It, this is written a long time ago. And I want you to think about this. Restoration of all things in Christ. Okay, here we go. We were terrified beyond all else by the disastrous state of human society today. When was this written, by the way? 1903. The fourth day of October in the first year of the pontificate. Think about how powerful that is, by the way. Laying the law down pretty quick. But talking about even then, the disastrous state of human society. Talking about who can fail to see that society is at the present time more than in any past age. And remember, I'm always talking about this, about the relative size and scale of, of uh, things that different time periods go through. So to them, what they were experiencing at that time was worse than at any time before. To them, you would have a lot of Adventism. This, that's what happened with, uh, with, with Azusa Street. You start to see the Pentecostalism start to come out in the early 1900s. The revivalism, that's, those are inevitable social consequences of really dark times, by the way. But they thought it was the worst. Suffering from a terrible and deep-rooted malady, which developing every day and eating into the inmost being is dragging it to destruction. And what's the disease? Apostasy from God. Wow. <laughs> Look, apostasy from God. Then which in truth, nothing is more allied with ruin. According to the word of the prophet, quote, for behold, they that go far from thee shall perish. So you look at it and you say, man, wow. Okay. This isn't the first time we've been through this. It was an amazing apostasy, unlike anything they'd ever seen. And think of what happened afterward, by the way. Think of the way that the world changed in, in some ways quite good. It's an arms race of wicked and good. But it's not unprecedented, guys. We must hasten to find a remedy. Yes, that's what the show is about, man. I'm done doing the, I'm complaining about this or I'm complaining about that. If we're, we can do that till we're blue in the freaking face and you know what that's going to accomplish? <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. It's good to point out the hypocrisy. Yes, it is good to show the lack of reliability in groups like, you know, the phonies, the phony baloney nonsense that we see with the governors and with the journalists and everything else, the politicians of all kinds. That's good. That's good. But it is insufficient. So if we do that and we end there, okay, good. You're like a meme review. It says that we recoil in terror from the task being cognizant of our weakness. We recoil in terror from a task as urgent as it is arduous. What we're talking about bringing back the good, making it great again, making America great again, making the church great again, making the liturgy great again, making it, making masculinity and femininity great again, making beauty great again, making international trade deals great again, making the land movement great again, making economies of size and scale great again, so many things great again, the centrality the centrality of the gospel, even to a point where we have enough in common that even with those we disagree with, we're able to coexist. Because right now, you can use that word coexist all day long. We don't have that thread that's needled through the entirety of our, of our culture. We don't have that stuff in common anymore. We're nowhere near a melting pot. We're like a tossed salad filled with a whole bunch of really angry meatballs. <laughs> really terrible stuff. And right here, when all this is considered, there's good reason to fear, lest this great perversity may be, as it were, a foretaste. And here's the thing. In fact, that's prescient. Think of the foresight, by the way, in that. To say, man, this is a foretaste. Look at the wickedness that's coming around and say, man, we got a lot of wickedness right now. It's taken to another level. It's taken to another level in magnitudes that are just mind-boggling. And perhaps... And I like the perhaps, a qualification, the beginning of those evils which are reserved for the last days. And that there may be already in the world the son of perdition to whom the apostle speaks. Such in truth is the audacity and the wrath employed everywhere 
in persecuting religion, combating the dogmas of the faith, the brazen effort to uproot and destroy all relations between man and the divinity, while on the other hand, and this according to the same apostle in the distinguishing mark of Antichrist, man has with infinite temerity put himself in the place of God. He raises himself above all that is called God. We're seeing this now with infinite temerity. We see it when they talk about, yeah, I understand I'm shutting down churches. Yeah, you can do it at home. You don't need to be a church. They don't understand. By the way, not only do they not understand Christian community, they don't under in the fellowship of the brethren. They don't understand the sacraments. They don't understand sacramental theology. They don't understand Catholic liturgy at all. So, I mean, even, even beyond just the mere community part, and that's not, I, I don't want to downplay that at all. We're not, to, we're not to avoid this. We're not to stay away from it. But look at, look at the temerity. And I love this. In such wise that although he cannot utterly extinguish in himself all the knowledge of God, he has con, uh, contemned God's majesty, and as it were, made of the universe a temple wherein he himself is to be adored. We are living there now. Now. It's a wicked thing, guys. Abusing liberty, violating the right and the majesty of the creator of the universe, but... And there is a very glorious, <laughs> a very glorious reversal here. But the victory will ever be with God. Nay, defeat is at hand. At the moment when man, under the delusion of his triumph, rises up with most audacity. Because God will break the heads of his enemies. That all may know, quote, that God is the king of all the earth that the Gentiles may know themselves to be men. So I look at this and people get worried and they're like, man, look at the great reset. Look at all this stuff. And I say, yes, yes. But remember, we are people that can look back through the, the glasses of space and time to look at history and the democracy of the dead and hear the wisdom that they brought forth to see the experiences that they endured and to learn. And not just to learn but to have hope from that, to be emboldened by that, and to say, look at this. What does the ancient text say? What does it say, guys? That God's going to break the heads of his enemies. That all may know that God is the king of the earth. And that the Gentiles may know themselves to be men. How are we to expect this? I love it. We, we believe and expect this with unshakable faith. Do you? It's hard for me. I'm not, I'm not going to pretend. I'm not going to act like I'm like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, man. It's, it's, uh, it's unshakable for me. Sometimes it's hard, isn't it? Sometimes it's hard to believe. Sometimes it's hard to believe the role that we play, isn't it? What can we do? We're everyday folks. This is a daunting task, isn't it? This is a big thing. And it's a big thing, not just because the nature of, of the matter. I mean, obviously it's a big thing, but it's a big thing also because that is the way that the enemy has made it. But the enemy has made it a big thing because ultimately the enemy is trying to take what is already a big thing under Christ the Lord, isn't it? When you have all power and all authority in heaven and on earth, that's kind of a big thing. When you're supposed to subject all things to Christ Jesus, that's kind of a big thing, I guess. All things is pretty big, pretty big. And it doesn't come down. It doesn't come down from the sky like, well, it's just going to just kind of plop on us and we're all just going to be like, wow, look at how everything was all of a sudden done. No, we have a role to play. And it's easy to feel like because the, the situation is so big that, that the, and the burden on us is so real that we, we, for some reason, feel like, well, I've got to do it all by myself. Get it out of your mind all the way, right, right now. Just get it all out. Don't even think that way. Don't even think that way at all. Get it, get it gone. Because the truth is, that's ridiculous. <laughs> the truth is, that's absurd. 
Don't be cuckoo. You ain't going to do it all by yourself. You know what you got to do all by yourself? You got to do what God has called you to do. And I don't know that for you, just like you don't know that for me. I have to discern that. You have to discern that. Pray and fast. Talk, you know, with spiritual directors. Talk with elders of your church, whatever it is. Talk with them. Say, look, I, I'm living through this time. It's really tough. I hate seeing this, and I know that my, my role is limited. I know, you know, I'm just a regular Johnny Q and Sally Sue. I'm just a regular person. But I feel helpless, and I, I, I feel like I can't, I can't commit the way I want to. I have, it's kind of like, it's kind of like appetites a lot of times. They say your eyeballs were hungrier than your belly. It's kind of that way when you're seeing what you want in society and it's this grand thing. And you say, man, I, I, want, I want that. And that's good. But the thing is, sometimes we, we feel like we have to just assume all of that on our own. But part of the beauty of, of the way that God works is he works through people. He works through these institutions each one with a role to play and that there's differences. Look, it's one of the reasons why we don't believe in this grand leveling of democracy where we believe that inequalities are fine. Natural inequalities. Some people are really good at doing some things and some people aren't. That makes them different. And that's okay. God's not sitting there saying, man, I wish I would have made everybody the exact same. No. That's totally fake news. Be okay with that. In fact, celebrate that. Work together on that and say, look, this person's able to do this, but maybe they have a weakness on that. This person makes up for that weakness. And together we are a unified whole. And by the way, that's a God design. Not everybody is an arm. Not everybody is a leg. Am I right? Can I get an amen on that? So we have to be able to do that and to recognize that that, that the limited thing doesn't mean that it's insignificant. In fact, it's ultimately significant. It is significant. Each person, what they are called to do, what they've been equipped for this moment and for this time, what they've been called to do, to give it everything they got, man. And And I love this. But this does not prevent us also According to the measure given to each, look at the the wisdom, from exerting ourselves to hasten the work of God and not merely by praying assiduously, arise, O Lord, let not man be strengthened, but more important still, by affirming both by word and deed and in the light of day. Man, that is, does that have wolf pack written all over it? (laughs) Holy cow. Holy cow. Yes, howling at the sun in the light of day. We are rejoicing, raising our glasses high. doesn't matter where we are because we're grateful to the Lord. It's another day that the Lord has made. And we commit to the idea to remember that we are on a limited time, giving all of our thoughts, words, and deeds. Because he is king over all. And right here, God's supreme dominion over man and all things. We are at the heart of this, guys. We are at the heart of restoration. A great reconciliation, in fact. You must believe that you're being here. The mere fact that you're here now. You're part of an amazing community, amazing group of people that are committed each and every day to this grand, grand idea. Realizing that you play a role. You're a special person. Your experiences, your gifts and talents are important. And I'm glad you're here. We shall never, however much we exert ourselves, succeed in calling men back to the majesty and empire of God, except by means of Jesus Christ. There's no other foundation. No other foundation that can be laid. It is in Christ alone, whom the Father sanctified and sent into this world, the splendor of the Father and the image of his substance, true God and true man, without whom nobody can know God with the knowledge of salvation. Neither doth anyone know the Father but the Son, and he to whom it uh, it shall please the Son to reveal him. 
Hence it follows, listen, hence it follows that to restore all things in Christ and to lead men back to submission to God is one and the same aim. Look at how God works. Look, I didn't read this until recently. I, I read it a long time ago, but I, I didn't read it in a long time. But look at how God works within our lives. Look at the way that we've been talking and emphasizing the idea that if people have not taken a knee for Jesus Christ, they need to do it today. And if you're one of those that, that used to be a Christian, maybe you walked away. Come back. Come back, brother. Come back, sister. Come back. And if you don't know how to come back or you've never, you've never taken a knee in the first place, reach out to us. You don't have to reach out to me. Reach out to anybody you know who's loving the Lord. You, but I, I open it up and I say, look, you can email me, paleocratdiaries at gmail.com. Paleocratdiaries. It's right on the screen right now. Paleocratdiaries.com. If you put an at gmail before that, that's my email. <laughs> it's that easy. To this, then, it behooves us to devote our care to lead back mankind under the dominion of Christ. This done, we will have brought it back to God. Dang, son. <laughs> Look at this. Look at the blueprint. There's only a couple more things, and then we're going we're gonna to go back to the comments, and we're done. I'm not even going to talk about other topics today. I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry. I, I have a bunch of news. I have a bunch of news. And I'm like, no. We, we, we can do that. Look, you guys, there's, there's a, maybe, maybe I'll, I'll post them somewhere else. Maybe a quick fire. Boom, boom, boom. I don't know. Because we can do this. I do it all the time. But this. I hope you needed this, by the way. If our, des if our desire to obtain this is to be fulfilled, we must use every means and exert all our energy to bring about the utter disappearance of the enormous and detestable wickedness so characteristic of our time. Think about, man, that is just loaded with power. <laughs> if we want our desire to obtain this to be fulfilled, you subject all of it to Jesus Christ. You, you annihilate it. You annihilate it. We must use every means and exert every single bit of the energy that you've got to bring about the utter disappearance. Get it out of here the utter disappearance of the enormous and detestable wickedness so characteristic of our time now. The substitution of man for God. But even when this is done, it remains to restore to their ancient place of honor the most holy laws and counsels of the Gospels. And I'm, I'm glad to proclaim aloud the truths taught by the church and her teachings on the sanctity of marriage, on the education and discipline of youth, on the possession and use of property, the duties that men owe to those who rule the state, and lastly, to restore equilibrium between the different classes of society according to Christian precept and custom. Not satanic communist crap. So you sit there and you say, look, look, look at look all of this, what it all touches on. Because we can go after the evil. And that's why I said, if, if we go after this, remember, remember guys, when I started to kind of change my tune on this, it was a day where I said, dude, I've had it. I'm done. I said, I'm done just always pointing out the darkness. It's all around us. We see it. We need to see the light. We need to amplify the light. We need to poke holes in that darkness and allow the light to shine through. We need to see. We need to feel the warmth again. It's dark and it's cold. It's disorienting. Like being in a room and you can't see anything. And you know that there's, there's traps all over the place. You could fall and hurt yourself. Fall and die. We need that light. We need that warmth again. And I finally had enough, and I said, we're going to do this, man. We are going to rise up. We are going to talk about how do we lay this down? What's at the core of this? What do we need to do? What do we need to do? And, and that, that's what Davos is doing. That's what they're doing. They have blueprints for domination. We need our, our tools of dominion. 
And there's a difference. One's godly, one's just wickedly satanic. And the last thing, talking about religious instruction, that religious instruction is at the core of this. And that's something we can do with our families, guys. That's something we can do in our homes. You know, do you talk to your kids about the Bible? Do you talk to them about God? Do you talk to them about liturgy? Do you talk to them about prayer? Do you pray with them? We had a conversation about that in our home. About how a lot of our activities throughout the day don't necessarily line up with what we know to be the best idea. You know, to, to make sure that you start your days with prayer with your family. To give the, the, the priestly blessing in the home. To begin and end your meals with prayer. Some of these are, are Catholic customs. To end your evening with prayer. To do novenas. To be better about times of fasting and prayer. To understand that, that our lives and even the temple of our days have a kind of liturgical cycle. And we talked about it. We wrote it down. And, and part of that was catechism, religious instruction, to say, you know, we, not just to say, well, we're relying just on the school for that. And the school obviously plays a role. It's why we do the show here. Every, every single penny that we make sends our kids to school. Every penny, 100%. Nothing else. I'm not, I'm not using that money and going and buying random crap. It's sending our kids to an amazing school. But part of that amazing school is that they have an amazing school at home, too. And that's also something that we have to put ourselves into. And that is a tool of dominion. It may be that the fruit of our labors may be slow in coming, but charity wearies not with waiting, knowing that God prepares his reward, not for the results of toil, but for the goodwill shown in it. And I love this. This is one of those things that's, it's, again, it's like God, it's like God working in, in my own life. I look at it and I say, man, look at, look at the way that God works in your life. And, and then say, how often has God just done something inside you over time through different experiences? And you eventually, you know, you read something that's a big deal. And you're like, man, look at how God's already been prepping me for these things. It says right here, but in order that the desired fruit may be derived from this apostolate, this work that we're going to do, and this zeal for teaching, and that Christ may be formed in all, be it remembered, venerable brethren, that no means is more efficacious than charity. For the Lord is not in the earthquake. It is vain to hope to attract souls to God by a bitter zeal. On the contrary, harm is done more often than good by taunting men harshly with their faults and reproving their vices with asperity. True, the apostle exhorted Timothy, accuse, beseech, and rebuke, but he took care to add with all patience. And Jesus certainly left us an example of this. Come to me, come to me, all ye that labor and are burdened, and I will refresh you. And by those that labor and are burdened, he meant only those who are slaves of sin and error. And the last part. And by the way, thank you guys, man. I, I'm, I'm grateful. I'm, I'm grateful that you've allowed me to talk so long about this because this is honestly so important. It's more, it's more important in the long run than what is happening in Michigan or in various places in the lockdowns. It's more important than what Cartoon Network is putting out there for people to draw them in through indoctrination into their crazy woke cult. Because we understand. We have a God's eye view of this. He's revealed it to us that when they do this sort of thing and they rise up trying to take the throne of the Lord, that they will be cast down. It says right here, Oh, when in every city and village the law of the Lord is faithfully observed. Imagine. I want you to close your eyes. I just want you to think about it for real. Because it's the last thing we're saying. When every city and village, the law of the Lord is faithfully observed. When respect is shown for sacred things. When the sacraments are frequented and the ordinances of Christian life fulfilled. There will certainly be no more need for us to labor further to see all things restored in Christ. 
nor is it for the attainment of eternal welfare alone that this will be of service. It will also contribute largely to temporal welfare and the advantage of human society. For when these conditions have been secured, the upper and wealthy classes will learn to be just and charitable to the lowly. And these will be able to bear with tranquility and patience the trials of a very hard lot. The citizens will obey not lust, but law. Reverence and love will be deemed a duty toward those that govern, whose power comes only from God. And then, then at last it will be clear to all that the church, such as it was instituted by God, must enjoy full and entire liberty and independence from all foreign dominion. And we, in demanding that same liberty, are defending not only the sacred rights of religion, but are also consulting the common weal of the safety of nations. For it continues to be true that piety is useful for all things. When this is strong and flourishing, the people will truly sit in the fullness of peace. I love this. I love it. And it's true. It's true and it's reliable. And you know what? It's readable. You are you are able to apply it to a vast array of circumstances and situations. All of them relevant. All of them real. And it's not just, again, like, you know, I know people that are like, yeah, but it, it only matters... It only matters about, you know, salvation. And I'm like, yes, in an ultimate sense, yes. But there's also the great mandate that has to do with things that are going on in the earth. And, and those things going on in the earth oftentimes are going to have massive ramifications on the way that people respond to the gospel. I like how this is, an, this is a full enchilada approach to restoration. And what a great antithesis to the reset. God is good. God is good, powerful. The wisdom of, of history and the democracy of the dead. And we're all the better for it. I wanted to make people dream bigger thoughts.